Pas sûr. How the HE double hockey six is, everyone? Hopefully, no one feels like asterisk, 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 asterisk. The weather freaking sucks today. Now, maybe an effing chill went down your spine when you thought for a second that I was about to say some unmentionable word. Well, we're in a classroom, so I'm not about to start swearing and cursing everywhere. This is a professional environment. I had to censor myself from what I usually say in casual conversation with friends. Censorship has a lot of kairos right now because, as always, America has been known as the country of freedom of speech. And with a country with, with, that's known for so much freedom of speech, you would expect that we would have a lot more of it. But a lot of, a lot of our speech is censored these days, especially with music in, in the media. Some people want other people's music censored. Why is that? Is it just because they don't listen to that kind of music? Artists use profanity all the time, punk bands especially. Look at Blink-182. They made an entire song just out of curse words that you are not allowed to say on television, just for the sake of it, because it was funny, vulgar, and immature. This idea that, uh, that vulgarity and uh, curse words shouldn't be in music stems a lot from the idea that children should not be exposed to music and, and words that would badly influence them in their childhood. I've never understood this claim, though. If children's parents don't even want them listening to the music with certain words in it, then their parents shouldn't allow their kids to do that. The government shouldn't have to tell you whether or not your ears are old enough to listen to certain words, and they shouldn't be able to tell you whether or not the words are appropriate. You can tell. Parents have the responsibility to raise their children, not the government and what their children are raised on and the words that they're raised on from the music that they listen to is also not, it doesn't have to be determined by the government. What happens if a child is accidentally exposed to a word or words that might badly influence them in their childhood, you wonder? Well, allow me to share a personal story. When I was in about second or third grade, I absolutely loved the Backstreet Boys. I, they're still okay, but yeah, I'm, I'm not as much of an avid listener as I was back then when they are you know, just coming out and everything. And I heard the word sexuality in their song, Don't Want You Back. I had absolutely no idea what this word meant, and I didn't care, because I was a little kid and I heard words every day that I didn't know what they meant. I didn't ask about them either, because it just kind of had a bad ring to it, I guess. But what you're wondering probably is, how did I manage to get through <coughs> life unscarred by this horrible word? Well, it's really not that hard, because it's... Some of you might say, oh, well, sexuality, it's not a curse word. But imagine trying to explain the word sexuality to a younger cousin that you know, or, or just a, a younger child in general. It'd be pretty awkward and it'd be very difficult. But, and you would avoid it at all costs. But somehow I managed to get through it. And we all have. We all grew up hearing words that we didn't know what they meant until later. I remember in elementary school, I saw the F word actually written in graffiti on the playground. Me and my friend were so amused by it, we just kept saying it back and forth to each other, thinking it was just some made-up nonsense word. It wasn't until years later that I realized it was an actual word, and then that, that made it even funnier, quite honestly. <laughs> but the point is, why does the FCC have to say what can be played on the radio when these words are already out there for kids to see and they can't control that? More importantly, oh, and the FCC stands for Federal Communications Commission, by the way. Why is the self-regulation of the American public not enough for those people in the FCC? A good quote by Joseph Henry Jackson on censorship is, did you ever hear anyone say that work, that work had better be banned because I might read it and, I, and it might be damaging to me? No, of course you've never heard anyone say that because that's completely ridiculous. If you don't want to read something, you don't read it. And that line, that quote is about banned books, but it also applies to music and song lyrics because you can also choose whether or not you listen to them. As a child, you may not be able to choose that as much, but your parents do, so again, it's in their hands. 
No one has ever been forced to listen to a song with words that they didn't want themselves or their children to hear. In a hypothetical world where the radio uh, is allowed to say anything they want, including any curse words or swear words, then we can just change the station in that world just like we do now. If you don't like the music, you change the station. We do that every day. Freedom of speech also has to be taken account for in other countries, because it's a lot different in some places. When I went to Ireland, I was confronted with, well, not really confronted with, but more presented with the idea that, uh, that swearing was a lot more socially acceptable. Entering my uh, friend's household, his mother and father both swore all the time, like it was just part of the accent. And I thought it was really funny at first, but eventually I just kind of picked up on it, and it didn't really bother me anymore. There's still plenty of room for polite conversation <coughs> with such words, and you don't grow up becoming a vulgar person just because you hear them at an earlier age. More interestingly, listening to many of the modern songs that are written in Ireland, I found that they had a lot more swear words in them too. But I thought for a moment that it was interesting because the, the songs themselves came after all of the words were spoken in daily conversation. So it wasn't so much that music was influencing the people that the people were influencing the music, which really makes perfect sense when you think about it. The same thing happens in America. They're not swearing more in music than, the pe than those people and artists would in everyday life. Um, many, many of the songs that I heard over there with many curse words wouldn't make sense without the words themselves. One of the songs by an Irish rap comedy rap group called The Rubber Bandits was called Horse Outside, and it had the F word in it three times just in the chorus. The song wouldn't make any sense without, and just like many other songs wouldn't make any sense without the curse words in it. When an artist puts words in a song, why, why should they only use certain words that just go, uh, why should they only use certain words that they know won't offend anyone? No one would tell a painter making a beautiful scene that they may only use certain colors. So why should a lyricist, a, lyric, a lyrical artist, be inhibited in a comparable way? To remove words from a song that an artist wrote is like taking out lines from a poem. Artists who use profanity don't want any pointless empty silences in their songs. They put words there, words they believed in at some point, that served a purpose for their artwork. In conclusion, censorship is overrated and unnecessary. It's an insult to society in general. Basically saying we are too ignorant to figure things out on our own, like what we can and cannot say ourselves. There's no point in paraphrasing what people have already captured with the perfect words, so I leave you with two quotes. The only valid censorship of ideas is the right to, of people not to listen to them. Tommy Smothers. And censorship reflects society's lack of confidence in itself. It is a hallmark of an authoritarian regime. Potter Stewart. Thank you.